Hello and welcome. This is Chris Ann. Cassie Rose is joining us right now. We are going to be watercoloring some components for our journals when we don't have the components that we want. What do we do? We make them. That's what we do. So we are going to be watercoloring different pieces to add to the journals. Now, Right now, I am working on, I think, a fairly large witchy journal. I'm calling it Season of the Witch. So we're going to be making these four components to add to the journals. Now, I am painting on book page. As you can see, this is a fairly old book page, too. So we're going to be doing a cauldron. We're going to be doing a broom. We're going to be doing the pentagram with a beautiful wreath around it, which represents uh, the, uh, the maiden, mother, and crones. It's many meanings to this. It is a positive meaning. And then we are going to be doing a conical hat. So let's get started. So I did two conical hats. I don't like that one. It's on book page. I don't have to use it. It's not like I'm using anything fancy and expensive to create this. I created it. I didn't like it. It's not up to what I wanted. So, okay, let's make another one. So let's get started with, I think, the simplest one, which is the broom. Now, I want to briefly talk about, if you've seen some of my other videos, I've talked about what um, watercolors I'm using. I'm using this one by Artsy. This one is um, all metallic watercolor paint. So we're going to be using mostly this one. The other one that I have is by Prisma Vintage Pastels. We're going to be using a little bit of that one as well. I have a couple other uh, palettes here. Maybe we will use those. We are going to be using uh, my series of brushes that I have. And these are by, I got this on, uh, this is from Amazon. The other water palette is from Amazon. This is from Amazon. This is from Paint Crush Artforjoysake.com. Uh, she has an Instagram profile, but I did purchase this on Amazon. And then we're going to be using some of these travel paint brushes from Duval. And it is those. I like them. I like them a lot. This is sort of the shape that I like travel paintbrush set. So I have paper towel here at the ready, which we will be using. Now, once I get these painted, I can either cut them out, fussy cut them out. I can tear them out. However it is that I want to add these components to my journal. So I am starting right now with one of the travel brushes. It is a number seven. It is a round and I'm coming in, so before you do some more, I've been watercoloring, so my palette is fairly wet. But before you watercolor, you need to activate the watercolors. So you need to spray it, and all this is is just plain water. Activate your paints, and we're going to be doing a broom. I think this is the simplest of simple simples. So I'm coming into these bronze colors and I've created a little bit of a palette up here because I'm combining a couple of the bronze colors. And then when I'm painting, I like to twirl my brush and create a nice tip on my brush. I am not an expert or skilled watercolorist. I am more of an acrylic painter, but I enjoy watercolor. It's something that I realized um, while we were in quarantine that I didn't really know how to watercolor. So I've been kind of playing around 
and teaching myself how to watercolor. You know, there's a lot of great watercolorists that I watch on Instagram. I'm teaching myself, but I'm watching all of them. <laughs> I don't know. Is that teaching yourself? I don't know. How does that work? So I want to combine some of these golds. I need some more water here. There. I want to combine some of these golds and yellows over here to create the bristles of my broom. So now I have, I want to get it where you can see it. I have this is what I've added them all to. This is very wet and very watery. So I'm giving it a twirl and I'm also kind of pushing down a little bit. You can kind of see that I'm pushing a little bit on this lip on the uh, paint brush itself to get a little bit of the water out. If there's too much water there, I can come in with my paper towel and just touch it right there. And that will take some of the water out of my paintbrush. And then all I'm doing is I'm creating lines down. Some I am curving, some I'm following that curve and then curving the other way. And then I'm going to come in with some of that brown again, just because I want some little streaks. There. I'm good with that. Let's kind of connect this. I'm going to let that dry a minute before I do these lines going across in my broom. That's what we have so far. This is the first one that I did. And that's the one I just did. Super simple. Align this way. Line, 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 line. That's it. That's, that's my speed of watercoloring. <laughs> uh, let's see. It's still wet. Because I am using old book page, the water is absorbed into the book page a lot quicker than it is if I'm using actual watercolor paper. It's much quicker of a process. I'm going to come back into this brown that I created only with the tippity tip tip of my brush. There. That's all I did. Just that. I'm calling that done. Let's move on to another one. Let's move on to the conical hat. So like I said, I wasn't exactly whacked about that one that I made. I was just you know, I was playing around with different colors. I was just playing around, you know. So let's come in. I have these three sort of slate gray kind of colors. And I have created a palette right here. So I'm going to reactivate this palette. That's the good thing about when you create a palette on your watercolor thing here. You can reactivate it just by adding water. So this one's a, whoops, let me, I'm outside. I'm out on my deck. So let's create this conical hat. So I'm, I'm making a diagonal line coming down. Come over here, I'm gonna make another diagonal line. That first diagonal line, I'm gonna come around, take that second diagonal line, I'm down to the bottom of that, make a little curved. Then I'm going to come around here and do sort of a circle. Then I'm going to fill everything in. 
on this one, I added another color. I left a, well, I added two more colors. I left a space around the brim of my hat. Now I'm just coming in, I am just filling this in. You can see the water is really absorbing into this paper kind of nicely. While that is still wet, I came in with this one, which isn't metallic. I grabbed a little bit of that gray to almost give it like a little bit of a shadow. And it's activating that other paint that's already there, but that's okay. I'm gonna come back in here. I try and do long, even strokes when I'm painting with watercolor. And then, oh, I forgot to leave a band, but I can paint over that in a minute. I just need to let it dry. So there's our conical hat so far. There. Let's let that dry and then we'll come in and put the band on it. So let's put that one up there. Hold on, I got a call to the dog. Cassie Rose! Good girl. Come on over here. Stay over here. That should get off the deck. We are going to do <laughs> the cauldron next. So the cauldron, I also used the same collection of sort of this slate gray black kind of color to add a little bit more to it. So for the cauldron, what I did was I created A U. A big old U. And then at the top I did a curved line, curved down. Let's just put a little bit of a lip here and we're going to put a little bit of a lip here at both top ends. Um, I also need to see do I have the bottom sort of even going to kind of even out the bottom of this a little bit more. And then I'm going to fill this in. Because I'm using metallic, this has a really cool sheen to it. If I wanted to leave like a highlight, you know, I don't have to paint all of this in. I could leave like a little bit there as a highlight, but I'm not going to. But you can. And then I want to add some feet. So I'm going to add just a little bit of paint to the tip. And I'm doing some more U's. Like elongated U. And I'm just doing two. The other two or the third one is on the other side and you can't see it. Now. For up here, for the brim of my cauldron, the, the rim to my cauldron, let me add some more paint to my brush. I turn it around because this is easier for me to paint it. And now I'm going to create like an oval coming across. And there's the lip to my cauldron. And I can thicken this out anywhere I want, anywhere I think I need it. Now, I added a really fun thing that I'm cooking here in it, but I can't add it yet. I need this to dry a little bit more. The other thing I did is I added a base, and I did that with some of this gray over here from this palette. I'm not touching the cauldron because I don't want my paints to blend but I'm giving it the illusion that it's standing on something. I'm grounding it. There. 
I'm gonna let that dry. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna come back to the conical hat. This is why I do multiple things at once all the time. I'm gonna grab a little bit of purple. And I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna add a little bit of purple here. I just brought that down a little bit lower with another color purple to kind of blend them. So that's what I have so far. And this is what I have for the cauldron. I didn't hold that up. That was my first one. Oops. That's the one I just painted. Did I show you the bird? I think I did. Yeah. That's the first one. That's the one we painted together. Okay, I think that's probably dry enough that I can add my concoction inside. Let's add to some of this green and reactivate some of that green. I'm doing my best to not really touch too, 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 too much because it will reactivate that sort of slate gray edge of my um, cauldron. There, it's fully dry. So now I can come in and just there. I'm happy with that. We're going to put that over here. And then the very last one we're going to do is the pentagram in a beautiful wreath. Now, for this pentagram, did I just use purple? No, I didn't. For this pentagram, I am going to use the tippity tip tip of this brush. So let's add to this purple. And this is a very positive symbol. I know it gets a bad rap, but there's no need of it. <laughs> It's a positive symbol. It's a symbol of joyful unity. Remember we used to do a star in school. Go across. We come down. We come up. We come down. And then we come across again. So I did that just using the tip. Now, I'm going to switch brushes, and I'm going to come in with, if I can find it, um, here it is. I'm coming in with the dagger brush, and I'm going to create the wreath that's going around. So I'm going to be using some greens. You know what, I'm gonna reactivate this green right here. See how that reactivates so nicely. I'm gonna add a little bit more green from over here to it. There we go, beautiful. All I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this little tip and I'm just gonna come around and I'm creating that wreath around it. If it's not perfectly round, don't worry, we're gonna fix it. Now, I come in with my dagger brush and I'm coming in, I'm going in it this way. And I'm loading up the tip this way because what I'm going to do is I'm going to press lift, press lift, press lift. This is creating some leaves. If I wanna come in and add more dimension and curve to these leaves, I can do that with the tip of my um, dagger brush.
some leaves going all around my wreath. And don't forget the inside of the wreath as well. So let's add some greenery to the inside. And then the other thing that I did is I came in with this one, which is a number two round. I loaded a little bit of purple onto this to sort of just gently mimic some lavender. So I'm doing like a bunch of dots stacked up together. This is just two colors. That's all this whole entire thing is. And I'm only doing these on the outside. This is just to give the illusion of lavender. And that's it. Super, super, super simple. So we have the beautiful pentagram. We have, I'm gonna move this out of the way. We have the cauldrons. We have the broomsticks. We have the conical hats. We have a lot of, I don't like this one. <laughs> we have a lot of fun things to put together to create a witchy journal like I'm doing. Or maybe you're doing a Halloween journal. Whatever it is that you're doing, I'm doing a season of the witch journal. I hope this gives you some fun ideas. If you create some of your own, Post them to Instagram and tag me. On Instagram, I'm chrisanne1234. I always post everything to my Facebook page, my business Facebook page, Elemental Energies with Chrisanne, and of course, YouTube. So I'd love to see what you come up with. What do you have in your brain that's creative that maybe can spark my creativity? We all share creativity together. And let's have fun with all of this. So this is just one simple kind of crazy way that I use my watercolors. Is it the right way? No. Is it my way? Yes. And do I do it all the time? Yes, I do. And I enjoy it because this paper is cheaper than watercolor paper. I'm getting it free at the dump because it's been recycled. Um, there's a section in my dump that people can leave items that they don't want or need and other people can take things that they do want or need. And so I'm recycling these books with this book page to add these fun components to my journals. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't do the little brown twirlies. Oh, let's do that real quick. Oh, I forgot the brown twirlies. So I have my long um, liner brush. This one's seen better days. And let's just come back in with that brown. I'm going to come into this brown right here. I'm going to activate it with the water. I'm going to twirl, 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 so I can get a really nice tip on the end. Kind of drag it off. And then I'm going to come over here and just do some twirls. Like if it was branch twirls, like vines. And I have them going in all different directions. Yeah, I hope you can see that. Yeah, now it's just like the other one. <laughs> all right, now I can say thank you so much for tuning in. This has been Chris Ann. Take care and be free.